What was very amusing to me last week was that James Madison felt that throwing the ball was Troy's weak spot, and that's what they were going to make him do, and that's what ended up undoing James Madison. So Troy proved to some folks that they can put the ball in the air and be effective doing that. As we mentioned, Kevin is our sideline reporter. He'll be kind of covering the pageantry of this thing right now. Florida A&M, we knew, would bring a lot of folks up here to Troy. And these folks are pumped up. They're ready for this football game. You know, three years ago when they came here, I was shooting this football game for my TV station in Montgomery. I think I spent more time aiming the camera at the fans, at the band, at the chorus dancers, because they're just tremendous. It's amazing the tradition this place has, how much they get into the football game. Florida A&M comes in, as we mentioned, nine and three. They started one and two, but when Juan Snyder came in after the third game, they really took off. The offense was outstanding. Snyder was the Mideast Athletic Conference player of the year on offense. And when you look at what they do, Snyder will be a definite key. We'll talk more about him. We'll also focus a little bit more on the Troy State skill position players as well as we roll on. We're in the second round of the 1AA football playoffs. You're watching NCAA 1AA football playoff action on College Sports Southeast, your college sports television network. Couldn't be nicer for college football. A capacity crowd of over 17,000 here at Richard M. Scrucci Field at Memorial Stadium on the Troy State University campus. The weather conditions are ideal. Not a cloud in the sky. Absolutely perfect. A little bit windy. We'll try to factor that in. A&M pass offense in a little while, but other than that, it's absolutely perfect. There you see Lawrence Times to kick it away for Troy State. Bam, you back deep is Demetrius Bendross, and this will chase him through the end line. Florida A&M will have the football first offensively, and we get our first shot at the goal. A&M Rattlers, they will go without a, hud up, uh, uh, without a huddle, the vast majority of this football game let's take a look at the starting lineups the rattler offensive line is absolutely huge uh, Dwayne Carey is an all Mideast Athletic Conference left guard for Florida A&M a key for them obviously their skill position guys and uh, we look at some of those Jaquay Nunnally they're all American may be a little bit banged up Sider on first down takes it himself he'll do that a lot this time not much there as he disappears into that defensive line there you see J1 Sider, a 235-pound senior out of Bell Glade, Florida. Take a hard look at that. You know, we, we talked about him throwing the ball almost every snap. That's a perfect call for him. Troy State's expecting the first call. They'll have a tough time running against that defensive front of Troy State, though, Barry. A gain of a yard from the shotgun. Sider and the Rattler offense. Wants to throw, release over the middle, and it's dropped right at the 29-yard line. It'll be third down of the Troy State defense. The Troy State defense clad in black. There you take a look at their offense. We'll take a look at that in just a moment. But right now, Florida A&M third and about nine. They need to get the 30. Al Lucas, the defensive tackle, you saw him there briefly. He is the man that is really the key to getting pressure on Sider, and that'll be a huge factor in this game. It will be a huge factor, Barry. We almost saw a pick right there by Troy State. If you throw it up that many times, as good as that secondary is, a Troy State, you'll see good pressure right here once again. They will not be able to move the football. Sider dropped the football. Who's got it? Troy State says they do. Coming up with it, the young freshman, Ray Sean Reed, out of Phoenix City, Alabama, and that's a quick turnover, exactly what Billy Joe did not want to have happen. The defense, there's Aaron Fields helping to key them. The defensive line, Fields and Lucas are both all-conference. The linebackers include Anthony Rabb, the Southland Football League Defensive Player of the Year this past year, and that secondary with Sloan Thompson active not a fumble instead to kick it away is matt carlton not a turnover it was a sack and fam you will have to give it away after three plays carlton a nice kick into the wind chases travis bozeman to the 34 yard line and he's got a seam midfield in fam you territory on a penalty play at the 46. These are the 
these are the things that can't happen once again. It, it, it looks like it's a, a push in the back by Torres State. The ball comes back 15. Michael Moore, they call him Mookie. The left tackle transfer from the University of Alabama anchors that line, as does Brent McAlilly. The offensive skill position players, Phillip Jones, Thad Bouton, they are key. Got to establish the run against that defense to try to burn some clock and keep that Gulf Coast offense off the field. The penalty is a holding call against Troy State to knock it back. There you see Brock Nutter, red shirt sophomore. This season, Nutter has thrown for 57.7% of his uh, of his passes have been completions. Very efficient guy, and he's got an eye backfield behind him. Five-man Rattler defensive front. And the delay give us to Phillip Jones right up the middle. Maybe four to the 42-yard line. We're at second down. Making the tackle there was number 54, the left inside backer, Corey Johnson. Let's take a look at the FAMU starting defense. Heavy Parsons, Jaron Daly, Tyron Johnson had a big interception last year in the game between these two teams. The linebackers, Corey Johnson, the leading tackler, also got the tackle on the previous play. And the defensive backs were last in the conference last year, but they have really stepped it up in 1999. On second down, Nutter complete and down the sidelines out of bounds first making the catch number 81 that's Tommy Benesee well, they, they start they did step it back Barry they got him stepping out of bounds just in this looks from here just a little short of that first down these are the things though they've got to work on you saw they, they control that offensive the offensive front control Florida a &M's defensive front on a good game to start with play action right behind tight end wide open on the flare pattern Tommy Venice making the catch. They will spot him a yard shy. He's at the 46. Troy State's offense needs the 47. Van Hughes front jumps, gets back. Faking blitz and a long count. Here's Jones pushing. Boy, he is very, very close. Getting up from the bottom of the pile, trying to deny him. Number 56, the right defensive tackle, Othello Vaughn for Florida A&M. They'll call it a first down. Referee Harold Bender will take another look here, Max. What they did, they, they put eight in the box right there. Of course, you've only got the six defense, uh, offensive front to try to knock those off. The linebacker stepped up the field, but Phillip Jones made that on his own. Second team, all Southland Football League. Phillip Jones, the senior, out of East Bruton, Alabama, W.S. Neal High School. First first down of the game. Nutter with a play action. Looks downfield, throws. Jonathan Carter bumped, and a flag will fly at the 10-yard line. They like to run Jonathan Carter on just a straight post pattern, and they have a lot of effectiveness at it. The call will go against the safety, Aaron Gray. Great, great play acting, though, by the wide receiver in that. You noticed he adjusted himself. The ball was coming in. He, he was really had two guys, two coverbacks on him. He splits the seam with those two guys, and what happens? We see it coming up right here. There's he gets the call. There's the contact right at about yep. the 12-yard line. Jonathan Carter. Junior from Lineville, Alabama. Let's pass in the fair on the defense. 15 yards, previous spot, first down. Our referee is Harold Bender. He leads the crew from the Southern Conference here to officiate this game this afternoon. It's a first down for Troy State. The nose of the football touches Florida A&M's 38-yard line. Nutter trying to stretch the defense the last time. He'll leave it with his tailback, Phillip Jones, for a yard, maybe two. Trying to wrestle him down is the end over on that side. The senior, Tyrone Johnson, out of Miami, Florida, Northwestern High School. It's going to be very interesting if you watch the lineups here now. There's the, the pattern starts to unfold. Fem Florida a and is walking seven and eight in the box, trying to stop the run. They know what the game plan of Troy State is. Troy State has, will be successful, I think, on play action pass and or just throwing it down the, down the middle of the field. There's Tyrone Johnson, as we mentioned last year, had a big interception return in the fourth quarter against Troy State on the 19-yard line to save Florida A&M going in. 
FAMU won that game by 10. We're in the first quarter. Here is Jones. He's hit hard at the 34-yard line. Maybe, just maybe a yard. It'll be third down, and exulting is the reserve left tackle. That's Terrence Woodard for Florida A&M. Let's take a look again. Wow, Woodard hit him right head up. The senior from Orlando, Florida, and here is a possession play coming up for the Troy State offense. First big play of this game. Out of the game comes Terrence Woodard. Back in the game is Eddie Parsons, their run stopper. Eight men on the line of scrimmage, toss three. Philip Jones needs a block, gets one. First down, maybe more, 24-yard line. A lot of talent for oh. Philip Jones, but that play was made by some great blocks to get him a lane. Great, great call to begin with. They had nine on the line of scrimmage. They just dip it in and dip it out to the outside and hit a go. Let's take a look at the blocking, Max. I know that's a, that's a favorite subject yeah. of yours. Great, great execution. That's, about a, that's picture perfect there. Darnell Vickers, the right cornerback, came up to put a helmet on Phillip Jones, but not until Jones and the Troy State offense picks up their third first down of this drive. Jones had a touchdown last week against James Madison, recovered a fumble in the end zone for his score. Another play action by Nutter. It's complete. That's the tight end, Lenny Lucas. He's at the eight-yard line. First and goal upcoming for Troy State. On the stop for Florida A&M was the linebacker Grover Fields. You know, here's what here is coming up right here. We'll take a hard good play action. They're leaving the tight end open every time. He was out on the flare a moment ago. Now he just comes across on a, somewhat of a play action bootleg. Troy State, this drive began right at their own 40-yard line. And the Trojans, with four first downs, now have it first down and goal to go here on their initial drive of the afternoon. We mentioned getting out to a quick start is key for both of these teams. Here's Jones disappearing into the teeth of that Rattler defense at the six. They're doing that, Troy State's doing an outstanding job They're mixing their plays. It, it just appears now that they've got, they've already picked up some tendencies of what Florida and m is doing by the alignment. They know that they're not just necessarily running on first down every time, play action, Catch them, catch them trying to stop the run. It's worked very well. They've done just as the game plan said, control the football. Right at the seven-yard line, just inside the seven. Here's a good look at the Troy State offense coming right into your living room. Nutter over center, gives it away to his fullback. That's Bouton to the two. Big 240-pound junior Thad Bouton is a load, and he hit that hole quickly. Johnson makes the tackle. Here's the play. Once again, the offensive front is controlling the defensive front. Of Florida and Troy State's doing an outstanding job knocking those guys off the ball. That Bouton is the number four rusher on this football team. It is third down for TSU, and here comes Al Lucas. We talked about him extensively in our pregame show. The big load, the crowd loves it when Lucas enters, and Troy State's got the football. They'll load up the left side of that line for the 290 pounder, and here he goes. He is at the goal line, touchdown. Again, Max, you know it's coming. There's not a lot you can do about it. Was it was nothing. They did. You're right. They, Florida and them slid their defense over, try to match. It's hard. This guy is a load. A, 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 we're talking about a truck load, not an arm load. Al Lucas, 290-pound senior defensive tackle out of Macon, Georgia, and he rumbles in for the first score of this football game. Outstanding effort. Lucas with his fourth touchdown in the last three games his tenth touchdown in his Troy State career and here's Tynes splitting the uprights eight minutes 23 seconds to go in the first quarter of action and Troy State leads it by a score of seven to nothing you're watching NCAA Division 1 AA football playoffs on College Sports Southeast your College Sports Television Network Look at it. Troy State up by a touchdown here over Florida A&M. Barry McKnight, Max Howell, Kevin Long on the sidelines at a raucous, raucous Richard M. Scrucci Field at Memorial Stadium. Troy State, their opening drive, Max. I doubt it could have gone any better for Larry Blakeney had he drawn it up that way. We talked a little bit about the lack of penalties. What we've seen right quick is they didn't have any. <laughs> it worked very well for them, Barry. Ben Dross, again... 
watches it go through the end zone. Another touchback for Florida A&M, and they'll start at first and 10 at the 20-yard line. Number one question regarding FAMU's offense is the playing status of their leading receiver, Jacque Nunnally. Nunnally, the two-time All-American wideout, missed most of last week's game with a left ankle sprain and is questionable for, the, for today's game. Spent most of last week dressed but sat on the sidelines during practice. Said the ankle was about 70%. I'm looking out and I don't see him out there. Maybe on the bottom of the screen. We'll check the number as it's first and ten for the FAMU offense. Sider takes it himself. Springs into the secondary. Got seven before Antonio Thompson can get to him along with Jimmy McLean, the weak side linebacker for Troy State. Is this a pattern first snap each time they're going to run the football here? And you can look at Troy expecting they already down Florida A&M down by seven. You would expect him in a high-powered offense to come out throwing. Once again, first play, quarterback draw. The gain is eight. It's second down and two for Jawan Sider. He's got time. He'll throw deep. Single coverage out there. And Sloan almost has the interception. Battling over there was Demetrius Bendross. And they went right at Troy State's all-American corner, Eric Sloan. And he's able to bat it down. Outstanding coverage. Very tight coverage. Both, play both players watching the football as it comes down. Sider is a big, strong guy, a big, strong runner, but he can throw it a mile, and there's excellent positioning by Eric Sloan, man on man over there. Sloan came to Troy State as a walk-on, all-league, all-American last year, had an interception a week ago. Third down. Sider may tuck it under again here. We've got Williams, his pullback, and there's motion by the left side of that line. Looks to be Dwayne Carey over there, the all-league left guard. You got it. You got to admire the Troy State defense right now, Barry. If you notice the alignment right here, they were, they were coming on the blitz. They had walked up within two yards straight across. All had ten guys on the line of scrimmage. No one that said, hey, come on, throw the ball. We'll run with you every step. I'll start on the offense. Still third down. Instead of third down and two, it's now third and seven, Max. I'll say that would change your play call. Yeah, absolutely. It's going to be interesting to see now. This is this is a critical play. This is really the first big play Florida and Indians had against this outstanding defense at Troy State. As in their first drive, they need the 30-yard line. Do the Rattlers. Jawan Sider. Gets a low snap. Got time. Throws. Got a man absolutely wide open. Ben Dross. This could be, and it is, a 77-yard touchdown strike from the 23. Demetrius Ben Dross. Somebody just lost him because he was absolutely wide open. You, you had a busted. I think you had a busted alignment to begin with. He did the corner stumble. Outstanding play by Florida. When you was a critical play for them, that's what they do best. 77 yards. And we'll take a look again. This is a third down play. And look how wide open he is. Demetrius Bendross, by the way, runs a 40 in about 4-3. Jeremy Edwards is on for the extra point, And we are knotted up at 7. Wow. Troy State now has to come back to that major game plan. You're watching the NCAA Division 1AA football playoffs on College Sports Southeast, your College Sports Television Network. The way I see it, you either get the best parts for your car. Seven score here in the Florida A&M Rattler Marching 100 is a happy group right now. 77-yard touchdown pass from Jawan Sider to Demetrius Bendross. Three plays, 80 yards. You know, Florida A&M averages 45 points per ball game, and it's not by accident. <laughs> no, it, it really what happened, it just looked like to me then. The corner got caught up in there a little bit too tight. He tried to jam the wide receiver. He slips, and, and well, Spindroff, as you pointed out, 4-3 speed. He just took off and beat everybody down the sideline. Eric Sloan returns the kickoff for Troy State. Near about the 27-yard line, and Troy will have it for the second offensive possession. Now we're even up at seven apiece. Let's head down to the sidelines quickly and check in with Kevin Long. 
Smith, personnel for Troy State. Uh, Florida A&M will insert a tight end in the lineup every once in a while, which totally changes their ability to attack. Troy is constantly have to make adjustments in order to be able to defend them, and as we saw the last series, they weren't able to do that. Barry. Troy State on offense. Very two to form in their first scoring drive. A lot of a mixture there. This is the fullback, Bouton, in a cloud of dust at the 30-yard line. Coming up off the bottom is the left outside linebacker for Florida A&M, Wendell Ashley, number 11, a senior out of Miami, Florida. As you see, that FAMU defense. They, FAMU, what, at that particular time, Barry, they loaded up on, the, on their defensive left side right over Torres State's tight end, trying to jam him to keep him out. He's been successful twice already against him. Called it a gain of three, second and seven. Toss sweep, big hole. Phillip Jones, no, this is LeBaron Black with a penalty play at the 35-yard line. He is driven out of bounds over there by Fields. But we'll check the infraction. Troy State, penalty has been as big an Achilles heel as they have had all season long. Let's see if we can pick it up here. Didn't really see it from that angle as LeBaron Black, the young redshirt freshman from outside Panama City, Florida, was driven out about two yards shy of the first down. There's Grover Fields out of Pensacola, Florida. Holding on the offense, 10 yards, spot of the foul, repeat second down. As you pointed out, Barry, this is something they've got to control. They've done very well with it so far. One penalty on the opening kickoff, a push from behind. This is only the second time. Troy, historically, though, in the games that I know I've seen this year, uh, it, it's had major problems with that. Second and 15 now. Spot the Trojans back to their own 23-yard line. And Nutter will work from the shotgun. Gives it to LeBaron Black. Seven-yard line. Surprised by the call, Max? Yes, a little bit. And long? A little bit. They give you the, the, the shotgun up look to begin with, trying to spread the defense out. Offensive line, if you notice, got a little, little wider split in their, in their alignment, hoping to spread out that good defensive front of Florida A&M, run the draw, picked up about five. Third down and ten, therefore, as we have got a little bit less than six minutes remaining in an eventful first quarter of action here. Troy State scores on a sustained drive in their opening foray. Meanwhile, FAMU strikes back with a 77-yard touchdown pass. Possession play here, Troy State 40% efficiency in converting third downs. Nutter is pressured, and he goes down to the 21-yard line, courtesy of Eddie Parsons, the junior tackle out of Detroit, Michigan. Here's what you got. Most four-man fronts want to drop back pass like that. They're rushed to the outside. He gave an outside fake with his head and beat the ta offensive tackle inside. There's Parsons. Grabs him around the hip pads and yanks him down. Fourth down. And Troy will kick it away. All the earmarks in this one, Max, of a whale of a football game. Going back and forth right now. About the way it's been penciled in, I think. Matt Allen to kick. High kick. Making the catch. Here is Kenan Lamb. They're all American. And a penalty play. He's down at the 33-yard line. Tyler Dees wrapped him up for Troy State. Dees is a senior out of Sims, Alabama. Mary Montgomery High School. And he is... Been yep. a special teams demon. Didn't see the flag. Have a flag. We'll see you. exactly what it is. Again, our referee is Harold Bender, and he will sort things out here. Illegal block in the back on the receiving team. Ten yards. First down. The winner of this game will face the winner of North Carolina A&T versus Young Youngstown State. Wow, there's the block in the back right there. You saw it to the right of your screen. That North Carolina A&T Youngstown State game kicked off at noon. If Troy State wins, they'll host next week. If FAMU wins, they'll travel. FAMU has played in North Carolina A&T this season and lost to the Aggies. First and 10, 22-yard line after the penalty, Jawan Sider. 
out of Bell Glade, Florida. West Virginia University transfer and the MEAC Offensive Player of the Year. Tucks it under, gets away from Lucas, 25-27 yard line, down in the arms of Jimmy McLean after a game of about five. He's tough. He's tough to defend. Well-designed well play, Barry. He looks to his right, makes a couple of plate pumps, and then scoops right back to the left, and they let the defensive linemen run themselves out of there and create a natural lane for him. That goes 235. McLean, the linebacker for Troy, goes only 230. Lucas was supplying pressure to flush Sider out of the pocket. Second down and five. Here's the fullback, Ken Williams, bruising ahead near the first down marker. Big Kenneth Williams, a 245-pound senior out of Baltimore, Maryland. Number one rusher on this team with 759 yards coming in, and most of it between the tackles. That was his first carry today. He's been used primarily as a blocker, but he's very effective. Anthony Rabb and Osi Umanyora combine on the stop. There's Kenneth Williams. Rushes 15 yards so far for FAMU. Here's another one. Williams again negotiating to the 40-yard line before Antonio Thompson takes his legs out from under him. 245-pound fullback last week in FAMU's win at Appalachian State. They rushed for 166 yards. Sider and Williams, Max, had every yard of that total. If it appears right now, Sider's doing an outstanding job, Barry. He's letting the defensive linemen run themselves out. They had a, a big stunt, a cross stunt in the middle with Torres State, ran them out, the fullback goes right up the middle. Nice first down gain for Kenneth Williams, sets up FAMU very well. Sider will option, Williams gets a low pitch, and he's got the first down across the 45 to the 47-yard line. Antonio Thompson stops him. Very well balanced offense. I mean, they can run the football, they can throw it out of the shotgun, something you don't see, even the option coming from the shotgun. First and 10, 47-yard line. There's Williams. If Florida A&M can get that running game cranked up, that can set up their passing their passing game very effectively. They'll fake. Sider, so strong, trying to get away and does. Midfield. What a play by Juwan Sider. Al Lucas had him in his crosshairs, and Sider just bowled away from him. What you see is, is really great athletic ability on Sider. He takes advantage of, of everything he's got. The other side of that, Lucas should have wrapped him up. He had him for five-yard loss. He is right there, but Sider's so big and strong, particularly in his legs. you got to get him low. Jimmy McLean got bumped backwards a couple of yards, making the tackle for Troy. First and around a second down in Troy State territory at the 48-yard line. Snyder throws. Nice catch right at the marker. Out of bounds over there goes number... 19, that's Robert Walton, the junior from St. Pete, in front of Kobe Jones, the Troy State defender. Well executed offense, once again. Very accurate with their passing game to mix the run in with it. That's why they've averaged 45 points a ball game there. There's Walton, 21st catch of the season. We have not seen Jaquay Nunnally in this ball game yet the two-time all-american and the leading returning receiver in one double a football from last year ankle and hamstring problems that kept him out but florida a and m hasn't missed a beat two minutes to go in the first quarter cider wants to throw pressure aaron fields knocks it away loose football and troy state recovers how about that first time they've been able to beat that he just beat him on the corner Somebody lost their hat yeah. out there. I hope it's just a hat. <laughs> I hope it's his. It was Fields. Either. Fields lost his helmet, still went after the quarterback. This is definitely worthy of another look. Yes, it is. He gets him without his headgear on. How about that's, that? That's and outstanding making, effort. Making the recovery is Tim Betts. That's a big turnover. He loses his hat but keeps on going. <laughs> I have never seen that, Max. No, it's, uh, that's a rare scene you, you see right. Go, you look, go back and look at the play quickly, Barry. First time they literally beat him on the corner. Right. Pure, just a speed rush is all it was. That's the kind of defense Troy State has to, to perform the rest of the afternoon if they help to contain this offense. Troy State would love to capitalize on this turnover. Let's take a look. Nutter wants to throw. Throws complete. That's Phil Yaw, 35-yard line. They ride him out over there. Well-designed little out. Wendell Ashley got him a first down for Marino Filia. We'll see him a lot this afternoon. 
That is interesting because this, that's his first perception today. He is Troy State's number one receiver. Uh, another young man is appears will have a great future playing on Sunday afternoon. Marino Phil Yaw, six feet three, 210 pounds, a tremendous physical specimen. Runs about a 4-3-40. He's on the sidelines after picking up the first down. A gain of about 18. Tech at 13 for Troy State. He'll roll out this way and throw. This is Jones one-on-one. -on -one. Gets a yard maybe. Did he lose the football? They'll say he did. Yes, he it's Tram Yu getting it back. So Troy State gets a gift at midfield and Rattler is here as number 54, Corey Johnson, makes a big play for FAMU. Here's the thing I don't think Troy can do. I don't think Troy can afford to try to stretch that defense. Too much speed on the defensive side of the ball. The hit was made right there, and a great hit. He did lose the football. And FAMU makes the recovery right on the sidelines from their own 34-yard line. Florida A&M dodges a bullet. Sider to Williams is full back and there is Shelton Felton the end on that side making the play nice play by a youngster Felton coming in the game a redshirt freshman from Cordial Georgia yes that's true his name is Shelton Felton each team with one fumble to this point Felton playing over there in place of Fields who's getting his headgear replaced Sider with a play fake. Jawan throws. Another nice grab Outstanding. by Walton. Wow. Outstanding. Kobe Jones knocks him to the turf at the 39-yard line. It'll be third down, but twice now Robert Walton has had to go up the ladder to yank down a high throw from Jawan Sider. Barry, that's one with a, with a really a high team offense like that. A very proficient passing game. That's why when they run the football, it's so strange because they have been very effective doing that. Possession play here for Walton and the FAMU goal, uh, Gulf Coast offense here. From the 39, they need near the 44. That time, throws and right through the wickets of his receiver at the 48-yard line. That was number two. We'll check the number. That was number eight, eight. Cedric Mitchell. You this point, will come right at you, Max. Yeah, as you pointed out earlier, Bear, this is, these two teams are designed. Uh, this is the perfect, perfect matchup here. It's such a such an obvious contrast between it's these two is. teams, and a, a lot of it has to do with who executes. Absolutely. So far, both teams have had miscues, and very rightfully, we are tied at seven. Matt Carlton shanks this one. Bozeman makes the catch and is hit immediately at the 30-yard line. Great job covering for FAMU by number nine, Troy Hart, a reserve wide receiver. Travis Bozeman gives Troy State's offense the ball right at the 30-yard line. Troy probably now comes back and settles in their ball control offense. A little play action to go with it, keep them loose. I think they saw quickly a moment ago they can't beat them to the sideline. Well, the offensive trend lately for Troy State has been balanced. Over the last couple of games, the Trojan offense has accumulated 791 yards of total offense coming in. 208 yards rushing, 187 for games passing, and they've kept along that script so far in this game. Brock Nutter. And rolling, boy, he's in trouble here. Gets away from pressure, throws complete on his knees at the 42-yard line is Calarius Pop Williams, the number two receiver on this football team, and that's a first down for Troy State. Good athletic ability on Nutter. Escapes the uh, sack, without a doubt, comes out, delivers the ball right on the button. Now they're rolling, uh, they're rolling that pocket a lot, Max. Williams on his knees makes the catch. It's first and ten for Troy. I think they figured out real quick uh, on the straight drop back. So they're still trying to bring seven, eight against a, a six-man block. Five of five passing for Brock Nutter. 81 yards, and we have reached the end of the first quarter of action here. We're in round two of the 1AA playoffs, even up here in Troy at seven apiece. You're watching NCAA Division 1AA football playoff action on College Sports Southeast, your college sports television network. You're looking at over 17,000 college football fans watching second round NCAA playoff action. The winner moves on 
The loser heads home, Larry Blakeney, in nine years at home, at only lost five games. First and ten. This is LeBaron Black hurtling across the 45 to the 47-yard line, down in the arms of Terrence Woodard, the left tackle. I think we'll go back to just what we talked about before the quarter ended. Barry, you're going to see a, more, a little more conservative offense now. Back to the basics, game plan. They were very effective the first drive by doing it that way. Well, Troy State last year in the loss down in Tallahassee to FAMU. Troy State fumbled a lot. They had six fumbles, lost two of them, but had a hard time establishing the running game because of that. Well, they did rush for nearly 200 yards in that game. As a matter of fact, both Wayne Thomas, whom we haven't seen yet, and Phillip Jones both rushed for 100 yards in that game against Florida A&M. 7-7, here's the fullback Bouton rumbling across midfield. He's near the first down marker. Also on the stop, again, Terrence Woodard, the tackle. Yep, Woodard is there. Just a quick hitter mm -hmm. with a fullback. Falling right behind the block of Mookie Moore, that left tackle. They cut right in behind that one. A first down for Troy State. Bouton was right at the marker. He needed the 48. Got it just inside. And gives the Trojans a fresh set of downs. Nutter so far has not missed on a pass yet. Releases to Bouton. Hit immediately and down. Nice job. I think suspecting it the entire way. Was, was number 47 on that side for Fan Yu. That's Anthony Cola, the right inside linebacker from Pensacola. Really good defensive scheme. They read that from, you're right, uh, the, the minute the snap came to another. The linebacker picks the pullback up coming out of the backfield. Anthony Cola from Pensacola wraps up Thad Bouton. Burn negligible game. Call it second and ten. Nutter from the shotgun. He's got time. Needs some help trying to get away from people and he drops the football loose on the ground. Who's got it? You know, I think that time, as, as Troy State makes the recovery, that time Nutter sensed there should be some pressure and got happy feet. He really did. The other side of that, that's a, that was a pure coverage sack, though, Barry. Mm -hmm. Everybody was covered. He kept looking for someone to break loose, and the pocket finally collapsed on him. He keeps thinking. Right now, he's thinking, they, they've got to be around yes. me. He gets a little nervous there and is fortunate to recover that football. It was number 69 who actually got to it. Brent Harrison, the right guard for Troy State. It's a sizable loss all the way back to the 38-yard line. It'll be third and 25. This is LeBaron Black playing it close to the vest. He gets a yard, maybe a yard and a half on third and long. And Larry Blakeney with that play call. Really putting a lot of uh, the responsibility of this football game, I guess, Max in the hands of his defense. Absolutely right. Uh, that was that was a little surprise there, but evidently what's happening, they've already picked up that these guys play very strong, being coverage in the secondary. Bach could not find the wide receiver last go around. They try to play position football now. After a couple of first downs, Troy State's offense is stymied, and here's Matt Allen, the junior, out of Montgomery. 45-yard punt, his first try. And this one he catches every bit of. Wow, Lamb will call for a fair catch. It goes out of bounds of the five. Outstanding. Outstanding. Matt Allen with his 15th punt of the season inside the 20-yard line. Let's take a break. Even up at 7, you're watching the NCAA Division I AA football playoffs on College Sports Southeast, your college sports television network. 7-7 here. Barry McKnight, Max Howell, Kevin Long in Troy, Alabama on the campus of Troy State University. There you see the, Troy, uh, the uh, Florida A&M coaching box and a good look at Billy Joe calling things over there as we get to live action and Troy State gets negligible yardage on first down coming up. They've got a couple of 300 pounders in there that really, really anchor that, front, that defensive front for Florida A&M. 
some of the scores in the other bracket game in this bracket. Youngstown State looks to have things well in hand against North Carolina A&T. Illinois State over Hofstra, the champion of the Atlantic 10, is down by 17 in that game. Again, all of these games are in the second round. LeBaron Black gets a half yard on first down. On second down, he has an opening and springs ahead to the 32, maybe the 33-yard line for LeBaron Black. Redshirt freshman, he is a Florida native out of Rutherford High School, Springfield, Florida native. Barry, you see a little different approach for the offense now, giving the defensive time, uh, the offensive line time to handle the defensive guys and then try to spring it to the outside. Darnell Vickers, the right cornerback, you see him there making the tackle, the junior from Edison High down in Miami. Third down, big play for Troy State. They need a little bit less than two here in the waning moments of the first half. Boy, what a great game so far. Option. This is Black with some room. If he can get to the sidelines, no! What great pursuit by Florida A&M. Max, let, let's get a number on that. I think... It may have been, it's either number 35, there it is, it's number 20. That's Torre Warren, the left outside linebacker. Ladies and gentlemen, watch Torre Warren close on the football. Great speed. You notice he stepped up to take the quarterback. Had, had Nutter decided to keep the ball, he'd have been in his face. Torre Warren played Ashley in that left outside linebacker position, and he prevented LeBaron Black from getting the two yards he needed. Matt Allen, two punts. You see his average. His last one, the 56-yarder, went out of the four. Kanan Lamb awaits, and another good kick oh, by good. Allen. At the 10, down to the 5. Down to the 1. Outstanding. Unbelievable. Matt Allen has really pinned Florida A&M back one more time. I don't know. I don't Let's go to a break here. 7-7 seven, seven game. You're watching NCAA Division I AA football playoff action on College Sports Southeast, your college sports television network. Third down, four to get for Florida A&M. Six defensive backs are in for Troy State. Sider may have a chance to tuck it down and run for the first down. We'll watch. Exactly. Same. He did not get there. Same formation, same situation last time. Barry. Good observation here on the fact is they put five wides, spread them across the middle, no middle linebacker. He loves to run the draw, and it's what he does very effectively, too. He sees only one linebacker. He is off the center of the field, takes it himself, and Troy State just kind of, you see Lucas leaning in there. Also, Rab was there, Tim Betts. And Shelton Felton, the entire defensive front, along with Osi Umenyora, deny the first down. Now, 2.34 to go. The clock is running. And if I'm Matt Carlton, I'm letting the clock run a whole bunch. Carlton, three punts, 44.7-yard average. And he'll wait till the last moment. Troy State looks like they want to have some time to do something on offense. Carlton booms this one. And it goes into the end zone. Two minutes, 12 seconds left. Troy State will have those two minutes and 12 seconds with which to negotiate 80 yards as we get close to halftime. Boy, what a great game so far. Bear in mind this, Troy State, 7-7 game right now, may have a little bit of an edge because, at least statistically, Max, three times this year, Florida A&M has scored less than 40 points and they've lost all three. It, there is something to be said for the value of keeping those points off the board the and getting yourself a chance. The thing that just jumped out at me, Barry, Troy State's more physical than Florida A&M. Maybe a lot, not quite as, uh, as quick, uh, have a much, uh, enough quickness or speed, but more physical. Wow, Georgia Southern having their hands full with the defending champion. In the third quarter, that game's down in Statesboro. Misdirection give. This is Wayne Thomas. First chance we get to see the young Dolphin product. He pushes it ahead for seven. Wayne Thomas is a transfer from the University of Alabama a couple of years ago. A young sophomore who was the leading rusher on the team last year. And right now, because of some ankle injuries, is running third-team tailback. But he's got ability. 
Barrett's going to be interesting. It's going to be like a chess match now. With less than two minutes to go, did the coaches play conservative going with a, with a new game at halftime? Seven-yard gain is actually second and three, and the fullback gets it. This is Bouton. He's got the first down to the 34-yard line. Well, they got the first down. They're running down some time, and Troy State has been known to stretch the defense now and again. This would, I would guess, be an excellent time to try it. It's going to be interesting. Now, if they do, probably wait till inside a minute. Sure, they do not want to give Florida and M the opportunity for the same thing. A bad call, a bad play, a pick. You saw Torre Warren on the tackle. Terrence Woodard, the defensive tackle, bow in his neck on first down. A minute 15 and counting. First half of action. And now Nutter wants to throw. Hit as he throws. It's complete down at the 50-yard line. Is Marino Phil Yaw for a first down in coverage over there? Was Darnell Vickers at right cornerback for FAMU? Vickers wrapped him up. Had he not, Phil Yaw would have been gone. Well, he got him just by the, by the shoe top. Yeah, he got That's him right tackle, that yes. Nutter is 7 of 7 in the first half. 62 yards. Two of those seven completions have gone to Phil Yaw, and both have been for first downs. Less than a minute. Nutter looking into the sun. Throws downfield. Phil Yaw's over there, and he plays defensive back and knocks it away at about the three-yard line over there. Good coverage. Was, I believe, number 35. That's Grover Fields. Yeah, they list him as an outside linebacker, but they, they have those hybrid yes. LBDBs right. at Florida A&M. He ran step for step with Phil Yaw. Nutter did a good job avoiding the rush again. And Phil Yaw just, his sole aim was to bat that one away. Well, 44 seconds to go. 7-7 football game. Troy State has it at the 50. They went downfield on the last drive. They need about hmm, at least 20 before they're in Lawrence Tynes' range. His long field goal this year is 48. Nutter has time and has a ton of room. Hit hard at the 38-yard line. Torre Warren lays Warren's the good. wood to him. He's and a good now, athlete. 34 seconds. The play took 10 seconds. They'll stop to move the first down chains as Nutter scrambles for the first down. But Torre Warren left a little calling card. Torre State now in, in, in their two-minute offense. They hurry up offense. No huddle. Need about 10 yards to get into, or five yards at the very least, to get into Lawrence Tynes' range. Here in the closing moments of the half in a 7-7 game. Throws. David Hill has it. Skip off his fingertips at the 17-yard line. Right in front of Aaron Gray, the safety. That play took 15 seconds. Let's watch this again. Nutter is a tough, physical 207-pounder. And he scrambled for the first down earlier and just... First incomplete. Bounced it off, yep. First incompletion, and he had it right at the hands of David Hill as Troy State asks for a timeout here. 19 seconds to go, 7-7 game. You're watching the NCAA Division I AA football playoffs on College Sports Southeast, your college sports television network. We have played nearly 30 minutes here in round two of the 1AA playoffs, and we haven't decided a thing. We are knotted up at seven apiece. Larry Blakeney trying to push the buttons to get his offense to get some points here. Second down, the situation is this. Troy State scrimmages at the FAMU 38-yard line with 19 seconds to go. Nutter throws, hit as he throws. It is intercepted. Coming back the other way is Aaron Gray at the 26-yard line, and Troy State's offensive foray goes by the boards. Here's what's happening, Barry, if you take a hard look at this. That's why they were moving the pocket earlier. Their, their offensive line is collapsing, and, and uh, Nutter can, either can't see or he's getting tagged before we release the ball. Well, he let go of a wounded duck there as his arm was hit as he threw. And there's Aaron Gray making his sixth interception of the season. What you have here is just a, a clock killer. For the first time all day, Sider's under center, and he'll take that knee, and that will do it for the first half of action. 
What a great football game Absolutely, this point, Max. Absolutely great. Contrasting styles. The other side of that, there is, is outstanding play on both sides. Very few penalties. Really, really exciting ball game. Let's go down to the field and check in. Kevin Long is on the sidelines with Troy State coach Larry Blakeney. Kevin? Coach, all kinds of pressure on your defense with what the fam's capabilities are. Are you satisfied the way they're constantly adjusting? Well, you know, we're playing hard. I've been playing pretty good. It's, it's, it's difficult to stop the run. Uh, the big back, the big quarterback, and the big fullback have gotten gotten yards and uh, are giving us problems with that. We've played pretty good with exception of one big play on, on the passing game. And, uh, you know, we just got to keep trying to stay in, in tune with them and, and uh, from that perspective. And, and offensively, we got to we got to keep moving the ball and, and get some points. I mean, we, we, we're moving it a little bit, but we turned it over twice. And, uh, you know, that's just not good enough. All right, Coach, thank you very much for your time. Good luck in the second half. All right, Barry, that's about it. We're locked in a good one, 7-7 seven, seven between Bam and Troy State. Thank we, you. We are at halftime. You're watching NCAA Division I AA football playoff action on College Sports Southeast, your college sports television network. Tampa Bay's in play. Monday night on Prime Coast Buccaneer Diaries. Experience the sounds of the game from Raymond James Stadium and field level. Play the position just like the Bucs best do. Go behind the scenes to the National Football League. It's pewter power all fall. Prime Coast Buccaneer Diaries. Mondays in prime time. Stay tuned to receive your free trial version of America's number one accounting software for small business. Okay, folks, here's your business card, letterhead, and my invoice. How did you create this invoice? With QuickBooks accounting software, I called the toll-free number and got a... Wish I had time to learn new software. It takes no time. Answer a few simple questions and QuickBooks tailors itself to your business automatically. And if you can write a check, you can use QuickBooks. QuickBooks makes it easy to see who owes you money and how much you owe. It also does invoicing, payroll, and inventory. Plus, you get customizable reports and graphs that puts you in control of your business. To try QuickBooks free, call 1-800-955-1655 for your free trial version. Or if you also need time tracking, estimating, and project costing, then try QuickBooks Pro. Either trial is yours free for calling 1-800-955-1655. That's 1-800-955-1655. I can tell you this much, the fans have been properly motivated. A great halftime show here, following a great first half of football. I'm Barry McKnight, along with Max Howell. Kevin Long is on the sidelines. What a great first half of action. Several big plays to really kind of get this crowd fired up. Let's take a look at the highlights from the first half here. First off, let's go down to the sidelines and check in with Kevin Long. Kevin? Okay, Coach Jimmy Joe, you've only scored seven points, but you feel you're hurting yourselves at this point. Yes, we are hurting ourselves. We're we're dropping the ball as far as reception is concerned. We even had a fumble. <clears throat> we're not calling the right play with the right formation, and just a lot of things aren't happening for us, and we just got to tighten our game up on offense a little bit more. Defense seems to be a little bit more sounder. They're holding them except for the one touchdown, and, and um, hopefully the defense will keep us in it, and offense will wake up pretty soon. Will you make any major adjustments in your offense, or you just try to do what you guys do much better. Right. No, we're just going to calm our guys down, and they probably were a little bit nervous at first, but they're starting to calm down a little bit, but we still have those minor mistakes. I think that once we eliminate those minor mistakes, a lot of positive things will start happening for us. Thank you very much for taking the time to visit with us. Good luck to you guys in the second half, Coach. All right, that's about it. Down here, Barry, we had an opportunity to visit with Coach Joe, and as you heard, he feels they're going to be uncranking this high-octane offense anytime soon, but as of yet, they've only been held to seven points. Barry. Yeah, Jimmy Joe is the offensive coordinator and wide receivers coach, the brother of the head coach, Billy Joe. There's Larry Blakeney, the head coach at Troy State. And, and as we mentioned before, these two coaches have been through the wars quite a bit. When you talk about Billy Joe and you talk about Larry Blakeney, you talk about two of the most experienced guys at this level that there are. You know, it's no doubt, and, and the evidence is here right here in the stat sheet. We're going to talk about those in just a moment. I think we've got a couple of highlights we want to go to talk about. 
take a look at some of the highlights. First of all, for Florida A&M, this is a critical point in the ball game where Sider, as Aaron Fields loses his helmet, Sider loses something almost as important to football. Troy State was able to get the touchdown on Al Lucas's rumble into the end zone to take the initial lead. Meanwhile, at a 7-0 lead at that point, Troy State also fumbled the football. A giveaway for the Trojans and Florida A&M with a 77-yard touchdown pass from Jawan Sider to Demetrius Bendross. As far as the scoring goes, that has been it. And likewise, the stats are just as even, They, they really are. You take a look, look at this wide open, high-octane offense we've all known to, in, in current, uh, I guess, came to revere. They have more rushing yards than Troy State does, about 10. Their big play, the 77-yard pass, is a major difference in, in the complete stat list as I see it now, Barry. Well, it has been a dead even ball game with both teams doing what they do best and, and it's been a lot of fun to watch in the first half max we expect nothing less in the second half look for them i think probably in particular for an to open theirs up a little bit more they give you the wide open look and ran the ball as many times as troy state had i think they'll throw many more times this time troy state won the opening toss and deferred their option until the second half so the trojans will get the football marino phil on the left of your screen and eric sloan who's on the right are particularly dangerous left footer jeremy Edwards, though, will kick it away from Florida A&M, and he has made a reputation for kicking him through the end zone. This one will draw Filia back three yards deep, and he'll bring it out. Marino Filia to the 20, to the 28-yard line before they bring him down. So a bit of a gamble, but it pays off an eight extra yards for the Trojan offense. It really does. The wall was set. Uh, this, uh, he cut the seam, and really, I thought he was going to spring the thing all the way. We'll see now what Troy does. If they come out and continue to maintain, as they've done before, and let the defense take over and try to win the football game, or if they open it up a little bit and move that pocket, let another throw the ball down the field. Well, the Troy State offense at the the 28-yard line as Phil Yaw was late getting off the field, and they're going to have to run in somebody to take his place. Brock Nutter had a very efficient first half in the face of an awfully good defensive rush for Florida A&M. 7-7 game. Wayne Thomas gets to start a tailback for Troy State, and he moves ahead to the 34-yard line. Once again, you see that they started on the sweep. He knows they can't beat him to the corner, but he very astutely broke it up in the inside. Take a look again. Just a simple toss sweep. Bouton with a seal block. And making the tackle for Florida A&M. was number 28. That's Richard Brooks, the defensive back. Game was six. And the Thomas will get the call again. And he is near the first down marker. Terrence Woodard, the defensive tackle, has been very active so far. Playing behind Ebby Parsons coming into this game. Woodard, a 295-pound senior. A product of Evans High School in Orlando, Florida, has been very agile in this game. And he makes the stop. And they're going to have to bring out the change to decipher whether or not it's a first down. You know, it was, it was Coach Jake Gaither that really coined the agile, mobile, hostile concept right Long there for them. Long time coach Florida A&M. Absolutely. Had a great, great tenure there. However, Billy Joe was gradually ch uh, creeping up on that one loss record. You saw it there. Troy State offense is about a yard, a little bit less than a yard short of where they need to be. You mentioned Jake Gaither for Florida A&M. Their past five years, they've won 47 games. That's the best stretch since Jake Gaither. Third down, they need a yard. FAMU will bunch him up around the football. Bouton, he's right at it, fighting ahead. He may have gotten it on second effort. Depends on the spot. Aaron Gray coming up from safety, trying to yank him back. But it's, uh, it's highly dependent on where that foot is. Absolutely from the umpire. Well, let's take a look and see what we can see. Not much of a surge as he tried to tuck it under. And you see Vernon Mitchell and Aaron Gray, the defensive backs, trying to yank him backwards. We do have a man down before we can measure. And we'll take a look at this. Can't see the number as of right now. But we mentioned this. 
Florida A&M, you mentioned Jake Gaither, and there, there's no coach who's held in, in more uh, high esteem than Jake Gaither. Tyrone Johnson's a man who is down, by the way, the defensive end. Florida A&M, for the last five years, they've won 47 games. That's the best five-year stretch since 1959 through 1964 under Jake Gaither. And uh, Billy Joe has been largely responsible for it with the uh, with the style of football that, that he plays. He's been able to get a lot of athletes there, and they've been very strong in the MEAC. I think a couple of things can account for that, too, Barry. The reduction of 85 scholarships in the Division One allows more or the better players to end up at, at Division One AA. In addition to that, the transfer rule allows those guys that are right. unhappy Division One, and we talk, we've already seen the, the quarterback at Florida A&M, uh, Juwan uh, Seifer, Cider, yeah. Cider come down and, and really take over an offense, uh, which he didn't start the first part of the year, but he is so athletic. He's a guy that uh, is seven and one since he's been the starting quarterback at Florida A&M. Well, as we mentioned, Tyrone Johnson, the right end out of Northwestern High School in Miami, Florida, has been a great player. He is, as we look at the replay, he'll be second from the left. You look at his knee down there and, yeah. oh, gets caught right under the block from the tight end who is coming back in. It's the left knee of Tyron Johnson, and they are taking very, very uh, painstaking efforts to make sure he's okay. You're watching NCAA Division I AA football playoffs on College Sports Southeast, your college sports television network. Now available. Barry McKnight, Max Howell, they help Tyron Johnson off of the field. It's his left knee that will get a lot of attention. And after they carried him off, they measured for the first down, and I believe maybe a Nats eyelash would have been just a bit too much. It was less than that. If the ball had turned in either side, they would have made that one. Very first, conservative offense, though. First down and 10. Johnson is out at end. Cedric Bird, they're going to go right towards that end where Johnson was. And Wayne Thomas is a, a Nats eyelash away from breaking that one, Max. They're doing exactly, again, a very, I think very astute. Game, game play calling right now there because they know they can't beat him to the corner. You got Thomas in that it can cut back, and that's exactly what he's done on two different occasions. Grover Fields just got him by a cleat. Fields, the right outside linebacker, sold out, really dove on the play. The Pensacola senior saved a big, big gainer. As it is, Thomas gathered in four, and it's second in a short seven. Another goes downfield. A lot of bumping over there, and Venice can't get to it. <laughs> Trying to keep them loose from the play action. It's, it's good. A lot of times there's value in that just by threatening to do Absolutely that. Absolutely right. Make them, make them play loose. Make them be conscious. You're particularly your linebackers because they, they know they've got to drop and take coverage or take somebody out of the backfield. What was happening right before the end of the half, the offensive front patrol was being almost demolished. A pocket was collapsing. Another did not have an opportunity to throw the ball down the field. Larry Blakeney sees his team on a possession play. Again, Troy State, 40% efficiency on third down on the season. They need six. And here's a blitz. Nutter gets hit, loses the football on the ground. They'll say it's an incomplete pass. Wow, lots of pressure over. I believe he saw the blitz coming. Anthony Cola was the man who had really pinned his ears back and was heading to the quarterback. They'll say his arm was moving forward, and Troy State will live to kick it away here. We'll get a good chance to see right here. So he never saw the blitz. That was a correct call. That was the correct call. As he's. Ooh. As you see right there, Anthony Cola, the right inside linebacker, his 11th tackle for a loss this season in Troy State. We'll kick it away. Allen scoops it up and just barely gets it off. This will not be a very good punt, but he had to play it off a short hop and get it away quickly. And Florida A&M will have their first possession of the second half in decent field position. Allen's had a good day. He really has. Uh, over 55-yard average the first half. He comes back, but I'm noticing uh, some additional things here at Florida A&M. On their rushes, on their punt rush, everybody's coming inside. Good opportunity for that kicker to run the football at a given time. Let's break away. 7-7, you're watching NCAA Division I AA football playoff action on College Sports Southeast, your college sports television network.
Some of the young fans, well, all the fans are enjoying this one so far. The Troy State Brain Trust on the sidelines. Wayne Bolt on the left of your screen trying to decipher that Florida A&M Gulf Coast offense that puts up 464 yards of offense on average every game. Here's Ken Williams, a fullback. Adrian, uh, Iron Fields gets him right at the point of uh, the handoff. I'm still amazed, Barry, at uh, a situation that continues to unfold here with the offensive side of the ball, giving you the spread look, mm -hmm. giving you the pass look every snap, and, and running the ball over 50% of the time. Jawan Sider. Play fakes here. Throws. Big hit. They won't throw the flag. I thought they would. It was right in front of the line judge over there. That's Don Williamson as Kobe Jones puts a big hit on Kanan Lamb right as the ball. It may have been a bit early. We'll get a chance to see again. Perfect time. Right there. Perfect You're time. Exactly yeah. right. I am corrected. Great play by Kobe Jones, a Florida native. He's from down in South Florida near Oca Lake Okeechobee in Pahokee, Florida. Another football factor. Yes, it <laughs> is. Third down. The line to get is the 42 for FAMU. Jawan Sider has plenty of time. Throws complete. This is Kanan Lamb. Lamb with a first down and yardage into Troy State territory at the 46-yard line. Kanan Lamb with a great, great catch. And we have a new quarterback in the game. It's not Sider. It's, uh, it's Quinn Gray, the big sophomore out of Fort Lauderdale, who hits him for the first down. An athletic ability in that reception. You saw just a little juke to the sideline, and up the field he goes. Quinn Gray, big like Sider, but can throw the ball. And oh, right at the 28-yard line, he had Robert Walton there, who had found a seam by Chris Archie and just overshot him. Gray is 230 pounds, a big sophomore out of Dillard High School in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. He replaces the 235-pounder, and Gray has seen action in every game this year except the last one, so he's not inexperienced. What they're running on the short side of the field is what they call a wheel route, where they run, run, run the outside receiver in and flare the inside one outside. Gray hands it to Kenneth Williams, a yard maybe. And it'll be third down. Making the tackle, Anthony Rabb, the Southland Football League Defensive Player of the Year. Five wides, no backs. And 10 yards to get. A little bit less than 10. We'll call it third and nine as Williams picked up a half yard. Gray lost something. Face his mouthpiece, grabs it with 10 on the shot. On the uh, well, shot clock sounds appropriate because it's like a fast break. They'll throw it downfield. Lamb, single coverage, eight, Antonio Thompson, and it's fourth down. Outstanding defense. Uh, knowing what was coming, Troy just lines up man, man, man right across. Put all 11 guys on the line of scrimmage. This Gulf Coast offense is like a fast break, except yeah. the field's 55 yards wide and 100 yards long. <laughs> exactly right. Matt Carlton, out of Lake City, Florida, a transfer in from Florida State, which is also, of course, in Tallahassee. And he'll kick it away to Travis Bozeman, trying to pin him deep. This one will sail over Bozeman's head and into the end zone. Well, we have played 34 minutes and 19 seconds in this football game, and we are so even right now. It's absolutely amazing. Let's go to the field. Kevin Long is standing by. Hey, Kevin. Barry, apparently Tyron Johnson had a severe injury to his ankle. They're going to tape it up and see if he can go. The, injury, uh, the trainer indicated they don't think it's serious, and they do think he'll be back in the ballgame. Barry. Well, it looks serious when it happened. That's fortunate news, yeah. and I am sincerely glad to, to see yeah. that because it had all the earmarks of being something that would uh, require a few months of rehab. Really? There he is on the sideline. Well, actually, no, that's Juwan Sider, the quarterback. Taking a beating. We talked about that the first half. You cannot let a heavy quarterback, in my opinion, at this level, run as many, take as many snaps for the run as he does the pass. Pull back. This is Laquitius Justice to the 25-26 yard line. The understudy to Thaddeus Bouton. Laquitius Justice is a redshirt freshman out of off Alabama. And at 40 yards all season long heading into the postseason, but picked up 40 yards last week all in the James Madison game. Here's another look. 
making the tackle was Aaron Gray, the safety. There's Justice giving Bouton a little breather. The tailback is Philip Jones, who has re-entered. Jones gets tipped up at the line of scrimmage. And it'll be third and short. Florida and him now starting to move their defense around a little bit. They shift in their, their front. I'm back is trying to confuse Troy's blocking. There you see Grover Fields making the play. Right behind Philip Jones. Tried to belly to the outside, but got him by the ankle. They'll actually give him uh, about a yard, so it's third down and less than a yard. Troy State needs to get it to the 30. And look at all the Rattlers and the box. Option play. Jones behind him. Fumble. Unbelievable. And Florida A&M gets it. We have seen this several times. This has happened to Florida State where the pitch is faulty. The separation is faulty. And a lot of times what resulted here is what results in that situation. Barry, that's what the offense that perfects that takes hours and hours and hours. It's a, it's a finesse type play. You, primarily Florida State so is a power game. It's hard to incorporate particularly when you're trying to balance pass with an option. He just never had it. Richard oh, yeah. Brooks, the safety out of Northwestern High School in Miami, Florida, the senior, makes a big fumble recovery, and here's a bona fide chance for the Rattlers. Throwing over the middle, Rad had oh, it in his oh, hands oh. and just let it trickle off at the 10-yard line. I believe they were trying to get it to Demetrius Bendros, but it was poorly thrown by Quinn Gray. Good, que good question here, Barry. Did the, did the end zone down the other end blind him or was it the sun? Because all he had was clear field if he had picked that one. The sun was in his eyes. It was right there. Anthony Rabb. And now, here on this play, incomplete as they tried to get it to Robert Walton. Once again, Toby Jones there again, Max. Yes. Once again, the chess match. Mm -hmm. uh, what we're seeing is no backs, five wides. They're bringing seven and eight. Quinn Gray on in relief of Jawan Sider. And Gray is 0 for 3 passing. Third down and 10. Sider, they're working on that left ankle. As Gray is in on a possession play. Toy State brings the house. Sider will step up. Does he have it up for the first down? No. Ray Sean Reed. Makes the play and denies the first down to Quinn Gray. He'll be about three yards short. And they are calling for the field goal unit to come on for Florida A&M. Let's take a look again. He has open room. Rayshon Reed is the only guy that can deny him. And the young freshman out of Phoenix City gets the job done for Troy State. Good coverage by the secondary at Troy. Would have, would have resulted in a, in a sack had he could not decided to take it and go. Jeremy Edwards this year is 10 of 11 inside 40 yards. This one a 34-yarder for the lead. And he got it. First lead of the afternoon for Florida A&M on a 34-yard field goal by that young man. Jeremy Edwards is now 12 of 18 on the season. And Florida A&M leads this one by 10. Let's break away. You're watching the NCAA Division I AA football playoffs on College Sports Southeast, your college sports television network. 10-7, Florida A&M here in Troy. Remember to check out College Sports Southeast's new website. Click on to www.collegesportscentral.com and see what's going on at College Sports Southeast, your College Sports Television Network. Squib kick that Sloan will round up at the 7-yard line for Troy to the 20 25-yard line, and that's where Troy State will put it in play. First and 10 on their previous drive. Max had a big chance on third down, fumbled the football, and that's what cost him the lead. Once again, it's, a, it's really that's a finesse play. The option, in, in particular with a power game mix, you just don't have enough time to work on a passing game and an option game to mix in with your power. So no surprise there as really... Uh, <laughs> scoring... Drive, four plays, seven yards, 34-yard field goal by Jeremy Edwards in his 10-7 FAMU. Roy State in the 25. Right at the line of scrimmage, nothing doing at all for Lebaron Black. 
track for the Trojans, chiefly because of that man, Corey Johnson, the senior linebacker, number one tackler on this football team. I think Troy right now, they, they're going to have to do something to move the ball. If they have to get outside, move the pocket that we talked about, you don't you not need to let Florida and m defense get fired up now. Momentum shifts that way because ball for them. Corey Johnson just found a gap and shot that gap and drops LeBaron Black in his tracks. Nutter rolls. This is Tommy Venice. Venice trying to get away. Can't do it. Nice job over there by a lot of folks. Number two, Aaron Gray was the chief culprit there to snuff that play out. Also over there to kind of help out. Number 93, Ernest Certain, the left end. Let's look. Here comes Gray from the safety position, and he just will not let go of Tommy Bennessy. It's now third down, and Troy State needs eight. Ten on the play clock. Bamu blitzes. Another throws. And Pop Williams makes the catch. Boy, it went pretty even a little bit. Have a flag here. But we got a late flag yeah. down here, and we'll check what it is. As Florida A&M brought the house, and Nutter was able to make the completion. It'll be a holding. It'll be a call against Troy State. Wow. Once again, Florida A&M moving up, uh, moving their schemes and keeping the guys up and bringing them on the snap. The completion was good for 13 yards and a first down, but it looks like it'll come back the other way. Here's our referee, Harold Bender. Holding on the offense during a pass play, enforcement spot, previous spot, 10 yards, repeat third down. Nutter. It may be on number 74 over there, Charles Thomas. But penalties have been a real pain for Larry ba Blakeney all season long, and that was a biggie. Third and 18 now. Troy needs the 35. They scrimmage from their own 17. And they're bringing the house again. They'll back off the blitz. Yeah. And Nutter still has pressure. Throws incomplete. They got pressure on him despite not sending a linebacker. And Troy State will kick. The pocket again collapsed there. We've seen this happen over and over toward the end of the first half. And here they come again. Watch the work of FAMU left tackle, Ebby Parsons. He comes right up there. Snuffs it out. Parsons was the last guy to put a hand on Brock Nutter. And he had to throw a lot sooner than he... At one and two, there's Evie Parsons for Florida A&M, a transfer out of Northern Illinois, and he is putting pressure on Troy State all game long. Allen averaging nearly 47 yards a kick today. A low liner that Kanan Lamb may be able to return. 45 in Troy State territory, and down he goes, and a flag comes in right at the very end. Nazir Yamini makes the stop for Troy State as Kanan Lamb pushes it ahead for 16 on the kick return, on the punt return, and we'll check the flag. Both teams played almost airless ball the first half. Now all of a sudden, I don't know if it's the fatigue factor or the team getting a little excited now because the score is continuing to stay close. Illegal block in the back. On the run back by the receiving team. team. Ten yards. First down. Well, that's a real spirit killer for uh, Jimmy Joe and for Billy Joe up here in the press box because that negates what would have been just outstanding yes, field position. Field position. <laughs> back to the 43-yard line after the penalty. That is where Florida A&M will scrimmage and the quarterback remains Quinn Gray. He is 0 for 3 passing and wants to throw again. Got plenty of time and airs it out downfield. Demetrius Bendross. Touchdown. 57 yards away. Second long touchdown for Bendross. And Florida A&M adds to their lead. 
Good job by the offensive front from Florida A&M. Troy could not get to the quarterback. He must have had four or five seconds to throw that football. Quinn Gray, his 14th touchdown toss of the season. Meanwhile, for Bendross, his eighth touchdown, rather his ninth of touchdown, his second of the day. Six seconds. It was single coverage over there by Kofi Jones and Ben Dross got past him. Edwards' conversion is good. And let's take a break here. Florida A&M pulling away here in the third quarter. 5.49 to go, 17-7 Rattlers. You're watching NCAA Division I AA football play. College Sports Southeast, your college sports television network. At Discount Auto Parts, we have parts for just about every kind of car and truck on the road, including a full range of Ranger parts. Discount Auto Parts, the place to start when you... Here's another angle on the touchdown, Demetrius Bendross from 57 yards out as Florida A&M has extended their margin here in the third quarter to 10. Jeremy Edwards kicks it away for Florida A&M. Back deep, Troy State's Marino Filyoff and Eric Sloan. This is Filyoff, and he won't get a chance at it. You mentioned this is a junction in the in the football game where now down by 10 Troy State may have to do some things that they, they might not want to yeah, otherwise. This defense at, at Florida a &M has tremendous speed. We've seen this now on more than one occasion. They can't beat them to the corner. They're, blink, they're, they're mixing up their defensive fronts and the linebacker blitz. They walk them up and run them out as we saw just a moment ago. And really cause a little confusion on, on Troy's part. Be interesting to see what concept they use though. Do they come out throwing or they stay conservative with the run game? The winner of this game will play Youngstown State. State. Youngstown State, the Penguins beat the Aggies handily in the other bracketed game on this side of the bracket. Some of the other scores, Georgia Southern pulls away from UMass from the 20-yard line. First and 10. LeBaron Black, five yards, and the A&M defense swarms him under there. Well, we know this now. We knew this coming in, though. The loser goes home. The winner plays Youngstown State next week. If Troy State wins this game, they'll host Youngstown State here. If Florida A&M wins, they head to Pennsylvania. Let's go to the sidelines while we have a chance. Kevin Long has an injury update. What you got, Kevin? Just very, very quickly, Barry. Juwan, uh, the quarterback, has cramped up. They're trying to get him a little loosened up in the sideline. And the FAMU defense feels they've got him right where they want him. They feel Troy State has to play catch up in the air. They cannot do it. Barry. They'll go to the ground for the second straight time. Here's LeBaron Black with a nice spin move. 45-yard line needs a block at the 46-yard line from behind Corey Johnson. Runs him nice down. Move. LeBaron Black on the play for 21 yards. Nice blocking up front. Nice move. And there's Johnson coming from behind to knock him down. Well, Florida A&M, seven points in the first half. And they scored 10 points here in the second half, all within the space of 2 minutes and 27 seconds. They're up 17-7, as you see. First and 10. Nutter has got time. Throws behind his fullback over there. Rather, his tailback, LeBaron Black, has snuck out into the flat. And Nutter threw it well behind him. Coverage over there was the... Uh, was the defensive end, actually, Jerron Daly. He was the one that was putting the pressure. Now, he was the one on the coverage. There he is. To slow that rush down, Barry, they've got the choice, got to go to some screen draws. They've got to do some things because the man coverage is eating the wide receivers up. to Bouton, the fullback. Again, that man for FAMU, Corey Johnson, was the first one there. Third down, upcoming for Troy State as Bouton gets maybe, maybe two. That Bouton averaging right at about four and a half yards a carry. 
366 yards coming in. Was the leading rusher in the first half for Troy State, but only gets two here, sets up a third and eight for the Trojan offense. Another slips, throws, Billion makes a great drops it. No, yes. they'll say he makes the catch. Number three, Darnell Vickers really put a hit on him. It's short of the first down, and this is a dicey situation. They need maybe four. This is a good catch and an excellent hit. Phil Yaw makes the one-handed grab. The ground knocks it loose. And the ground knocks it loose. I'm not sure that Vickers made an outstanding hit. I'm more sure, yeah, that it was Phil Yaw falling on the football that caused him to get up slowly. And he'll sit on the sidelines. They needed eight. They got four on the play. And here comes Allen again. Excellent at pinning the opponent deep. Kanan Lamb will watch this one bounce. And he's going to pick it up. Wow, that's a scary situation at the seven-yard line. There. Kanan Lamb, that young man is a senior and ought to know better. Nick Colbert was there. And they're lucky to, uh, to be able to still run their offense out there. Well, he's got two really guys right in his yes. face, including Colbert, who is a sure tackler, as Troy State's got. Colbert was there, and also Dam Damian Jones was there. And Kanan Lamb is lucky to still be out there on the field. That's a no-no. <laughs> you don't pick him up inside the 10-yard inside line. Two minutes, 46 seconds left. We're in the third quarter here from Troy, and it's up to Al Lucas and the Trojan defense to try to maintain this field position because Quinn Gray is backed up deep. He'll take it himself. Go to the outside. Jimmy McLean corrals him at the nine. Give him a yard. Now you're talking about the two quarterback system trying to be effective. Here's a, a young man in Quinn Gray that primarily is the passer. Uh, this is the first time he's tried to run. Jimmy McLean, good lateral movement to yank down Quinn Gray. Jimmy McLean is a sophomore from Enterprise. 4.65 40-yard dash time. Also, bench is about 400. He is an excellent athlete. Ran down a pretty good quarterback. Gray on second down. Nice completion at the 20-yard line. Boy, that was pretty. Was. Making the catch was Ben Dross, who has been a thorn in the Trojan side this afternoon. Boy, that was beautiful. Gray just put it right where he really needed did. to. Florida A&M's offensive front really handled the defensive front of Troy. They're only rushing four right now, trying to play a little zone. Bendross just curled right, right in behind the linebacker. Bendross came in with 31 catches. He's already run two catches in for touchdowns today. First and ten. This is Williams, the big fullback, and Williams to the 25-yard line, a four-yard march off for Ken Williams. Williams is senior out of Baltimore, Maryland. Number one rusher on this team. His longest rush of the season is only 24 yards, so he's not what you call a game breaker, but he is exactly what this offense needs, Max. 250 pounds, primarily as a blocker, but always a great short yardage guy. Gray wants to throw on second down. Got a man there! At midfield, right in the midst of Ben Dross, and it flew out and fell harmlessly to the turf. Once, once again, exposing the inside man on, on a wheel route. Let's watch this one in slow motion because Gray put it right there. Can't throw it better than that. Cannot throw it better than that. Ben Dross gets a, gets a free pass on that one. They'll forgive him for that one because it was good work so far. But now it's third down. They need six. Screen. First time we've seen the screen here. Williams can't get away from the initial line of defense. That's Newman Yora and Anthony Rabb. And FAMU will have to kick. We are now exactly at one minute of the third quarter, and Troy State made a nice defensive stand when they had to. Nice catch by Williams. Very good teams. Anthony Rabb and Osi Umen Yora ran him down, and Quinn Gray will talk with Jimmy Joe as he comes off the sideline. It is apparent he does let the quarterbacks call every snap. Bozeman awaits. Matt Carlton's kick. And they got it. 
It's up in the air. Troy State has blocked it. And here's Donnie Young with it at the 25-yard line, 23-yard line. Florida A&M took advantage of a Troy State fumble to take the lead here in the third quarter. And the Trojan faithful are urging the Trojan offense to take advantage of this positive break. I, I, right prior to that, in my mind, I'm, I'm wheeling through the last mistake that Troy State made. He gave... Florida A&M took a great advantage of that. Now we'll see if their offense can take advantage of this defense. This Donnie Young didn't see who blocked it. We'll get a look. It might have been, yes, it was yeah. Yazir, it was Nazir Yamini who got it. And there's Young to pick it up. The young freshman out of Quincy, Florida, a native of the Tallahassee area. Quincy's just up the road, Shanks High School. Clock's running. Trojans have got to hurry. Five on the play clock as they position themselves. Two on the play clock. One, and they got it off. Wow. No, they'll say they didn't. Motion. No, they did not get it off. You're they right. They didn't get it off. The line judge over there, Don Williamson, threw the flag. And he's the one who makes that call. There you see our referee, Harold Bender. Dead ball, false start on the offense, five yards, first down. I am corrected. A lot of times they're hustling to try to get right. it Isn't snapped. It? Yeah, there, there he is. is. I didn't see it, yeah. but Brent Harrison did get up a millisecond early. Harrison, the junior out of Enterprise. As Troy State was hurrying to get the play going. Game clock, clock right now shows 24 seconds. They're asking to put five seconds on because it was a dead ball foul. Technically, the play never happened. First and 15 from the 29-yard line after the block punt. Phillip Jones. 6-yard line. Grover Fields on the tackle along with Aaron Gray. Look for Troy to stay conservative here, Barry. I think they'll take the ball and just drive, try to drive it right in the end zone. Also in on it, the left cornerback, Vernon Mitchell. As Jones will sit down. There's Fields, who's been very active. They'll... Start the clock, and Troy State will let the final 10 seconds of the third quarter clock tick off here. The 1AA playoffs have moved to the second round here this afternoon, and this game has moved to the fourth quarter. Florida A&M on the road leads by 10. You're watching the NCAA Division 1AA football playoffs on College Sports Southeast, your College Sports Television Network. When you get online, remember, check out College Sports Southeast's new website. We're proud of it. Click on to www.collegesportscentral.com and see what's going on at College Sports Southeast, your college sports television network. Troy State trying to capitalize here on a break. It's now second down and long. Here's LeBaron Black. Black vaulting to the 16-yard line of thereabouts where it'll be third down. He had to find his own way there, Barry. There's no hole to the left side. He had to break it back to the right, and the defense of Florida A&M continues to swarm. An outstanding unit. Now, Troy State trying to capitalize on the blocked punt by Nazir Yamini just moments ago. Florida A&M scored 10 points in the third quarter, keyed by a fumble recovery and another long touchdown pass. They've had two of those in this game. Troy State, this is a pivotal drive here and a pivotal play in that drive. The Trojans need to. Here's Bouton, the fullback, and I think he got it. I think he got that one. Yes, By a yard, maybe. Bad Bouton. As Brock Nutter has... He's been very steady all afternoon. They've done a lot of different things with him. They've rolled yeah. the pocket, a little play action now and again. Some real matchups up front with uh, Florida A&M's defensive front versus Troy's offensive front. Go back and try to bay weight the full game up to now. I'm not sure that uh, Florida A&M hadn't gotten the best of it. 
Oh, I tend to agree. I said they got it by a yard. <laughs> what's a what's a couple of feet between friends? Oh, that's no doubt. <laughs> Larry Blakeney, you know, he's calm and collected on the sidelines, but you know he's churning because that was a big third a down play. conversion. It was. Troy will scrimmage from the Florida A&M 14-yard line. This is LeBaron Black from Bhutan can't do much with it as the FAMU defense really gang tackles maybe a couple for LeBaron Black got a great block by Bhutan but wave of Rattlers right behind that block the more that Troy tries to spread them and, and try to run the side the more pursuit patterns obviously the football day and is able to take advantage of watch the defensive end on that side Jerron Daly get blocked very hard but once again Corey Johnson was there to turn the play inside A two-yard pickup for Black. Bouton, just a fullback dive inside the 10, maybe to the seven-yard line, where he looks to be about two and a half, three yards short. Barry, that's the way you negate the speed of the defense at the Florida a and run straight at them. Allow you, so you don't have to block the guys off the line, just screen them and allow, let, let the quick hit of the fullback and tailback hit it up in there. And that's what Troy's doing and doing it very effectively right now. Is that one of the reasons why we're seeing so many cutbacks? Yes, absolutely. Trying to they, use their pursuit yeah. against them? Yeah, they, they, can't, they can't physically beat them, so they just screen them off, which is fine. Now, I know the Florida State offense, Florida A&M offense has got a catchy nickname and, you know, the Gold Coast offense, but we got to tip our hats to this fan new defense. They yes. made the difference. Third down, three to get. Here's Pat Black. No. A yard, and that is it. He'll be two yards shy as Richard Brooks, the safety, a senior from Miami, made a big play. Speed. If you notice him, he was untouched. He came from the outside. Yeah, but here's he the safety inside. coming up. Yep. That, that's a gamble to take, and Brooks yes, made it pay off. Lawrence Tynes, the Troy State field goal kicker, will step off what would be a 24-yard field goal try to draw the Trojans to within a score. Lawrence Tynes, 10 of 12 this year inside 40 yards. From 24 yards away, no doubt about it. So the Trojans get a field goal back here, but Florida A&M continues to hold a seven-point lead. 11.57 left in the football game. Florida A&M 17, Roy State 10. You're watching the NCAA Division I AA football play. Southeast, your college sports television network. Seventeen ten after Lawrence Tynes converted on a 24-yard field goal attempt and will kick off here to Demetrius Bendross of FAMU. Again, Tynes really ate his Wheaties and Bendross back at about the five-yard deep mark into the end zone. Well, in the third quarter, Troy State fumbled. And Florida A&M was able to turn that into three points. Here, late in the third quarter and on into the fourth, Florida A&M had a punt block, and Troy State got three out of that. Scoring drive after the block punt. Seven plays, 12 yards to get the 24-yard field goal. And momentum right now, we're at one of those ebb and flow times. Very important, right? We'll see. You see, again, Quinn Gray, who has played the entire second half after Jawan Sider played all first half. And he has been on the mark. There's Robert Malone to the 34-yard line. Gray is not your normal number two quarterback. This kid has thrown for 13, now 14 touchdowns, nearly 121 yards a game. This kid comes off the bench, and he could be starting at a whole bunch of places. If you look at it, uh, but we talked we talk a great deal of, right before the end of the first half about Sider. You cannot ask him to run that many plays and take the be physical beating at this level. Here's Kanan Lamb, the All-American, losing his footing at the 46-yard line. It's good for a first down. Right on the hash mark, Kanan Lamb out of Norland High School in Miami, one of the slot men, number one receiver, came in with 76 catches today, or in this season. This offense now is taking on a, on a look, Barry, of a, of a running shoot, more like the old West Coast, and I'm sure the Coast Show team came up with this concept. Gray pump fakes, throws down the field, 
the receiver had stepped out of bounds anyway. He wasn't eligible, I believe. Yes, that is Ben Dross over there. And it was overthrown. Chris Archie providing deep coverage defensively for Troy State. The quarterbacks, we alluded to at Florida A&M, are bigger than most schools' linebackers. Jawan Sider is 235 pounds, and that man, Quinn Gray, the baby of the group. He's only 6'3", 230. Billy Joe up in the press box. On the plays over the middle. Canaan Land is open again. 40, 35-yard line protecting the football and down to the 32-yard line. Canaan Lamb had four catches last year in FAMU's win against Florida State, and he's coming up big here in 99. This offense is designed, once again, Barry, for mismatches. They got a linebacker walk out trying to cover an All-American wide receiver. It just doesn't work. Chris Archie. Finally puts him down. First down, Florida A&M. Gray has lit a fire under the FAMU offense, and he throws to the sideline. Is it complete? The line judge took a spill. He makes the catch, and there's a late... There's a marker down. That's a marker to put where the uh, ball went out of bounds, I believe. The catch was made over there. The flag, too. By That's number 85, Nunnally who is in the game. They threw a flag. It wasn't just a marker to mark the point where he went out of bounds. That was a flag. As it upended Don Williamson over there, Harold Bender will make the call. The receiver went out of bounds voluntarily, came back in, was the first to touch the pass. Penalty is lost it down, previous spot. Well, how about that? Walked out. Jaquay Nunnally, we had mentioned him, last year was the leading receiver in all of 1AA, and he has had ankle and hamstring problems. First time we've seen him today. Now, the catch was made right there, and it was a great camera angle. It was in bounds there, but he had gone out of bounds voluntarily, which makes him immediately ineligible. Lost it down, second down. Gray way overshoots his receiver over there. That was Ben Dross. In front of Kobe Jones. Third down. I think with a, uh, the answer to seeing a game like this, Barry, if they fail to convert on third, is this, is this four down territory for them? Their field goal kicker, Jeremy Edwards, has a long this year a 45. If they were to kick it right now, it would be a 49-yarder, and we have a whistle and a stoppage in play. There's a legal substitution in the first. One of those deals, Max, where you bring 12 men in the huddle and you run one out. Run one of them out. Florida A&M offensively. Illegal substitution on the offense. 12 men in the formation. Florida A&M, 252 passing yards in this game on just 13 completions. FAMU, 13 of 28, 252 yards. They have a 77-yard touchdown and a 57-yard touchdown. They face a third down. About 15. They need to get to the 22-yard line. From the 37. Gray rolls the pocket. Got a man right there. Lost it. Oh, and Jimmy McLean just about had it for oh, Troy State. Okay. Yeah. Over Good there, coverage. that was uh, number eight, Cedric Mitchell. And it popped through his hands like a bar of soap. Troy State almost got a free one. You'll instantly, they, they start to, Florida A&M now starts to move the pocket a little bit. The offensive front probably much like Troy is becoming a little fatigued. I misidentified. It wasn't 8 Mitchell. It was 85 Jacque Nunnally. And now on fourth down. Carlton is in. Troy State got the last one. This time Carlton will kick it into the end zone. Boy, they had a guy over there. Florida A&M had Troy Hart over there ready to knock it back, but he just missed it. Touchback here. Troy State down. Florida A&M has a seven-point margin here with 10 minutes and 41 seconds left in the third quarter. Over on the sidelines, the Troy State offense is in mass. Over on that side is our Kevin Long. 
problem Troy State coaches see at this point is Troy State has had trouble picking up all the different kinds of blitzes that Florida A&M has pulled on them, and how well they're able to adjust in the next 10 minutes is pretty much going to determine whether they go on or stay home in this NCAA playoff. Barry? That's an excellent point. Adjustments in the final 10 minutes yes. of this game. If Troy State's going to come back, the, uh, the time is getting short. Troy State's made a living all year long, though, Barry, in ball control. Now is the time for them to have to step it up. The offensive line has to really control the defense of Florida A&M if they're going to win this game. The Baron Black hit He'll start immediately. Cola was the guy who drove him back, but he was hit as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage. Anthony Cola threw him backwards, but they'll give him credit back to the line of scrimmage, and that is it. Boy, he hit his own man in the back. Yeah. Harrison was trying to drive a guy off. They're not, they're not winning the battle up front of the trenches. Anthony Cola from Woodham High School in Pensacola, Florida. A&M's defensive line has been the story in this game. This is where the game is being won or lost right there. Matter in plenty of difficulty back at the 15 yard line just ran out of time and options a coverage sack once again an outstanding job by the secondary of Florida A&M no place for him to go the pocket, the pocket continues to collapse well we made the point earlier that the Florida A&M defense they don't have a catchy nickname or anything but they have been the difference in this football yes, they game. have no doubt about it making the hit down low was Jerron Daly he came in with 11 sacks this season. He had two tackles for loss last week against Appalachian State. He gets one here, third and... Nutter with a little time will throw. Phil Yaw is there, but it's knocked away. Great job by Vernon Mitchell, one-on-one, -on -one, the left cornerback out of Miami. Little technique situation here. The only spot on the field that has sun that's where Phil Yaw was. One-on-one, <laughs> -on -one, Phil Yaw right now battling with Mitchell, and they threw that way. And Mitchell got just enough of it to knock it out of Marino's grasp. The Trojans will kick. A&M punching up, looking like they want to put some pressure on Matt Allen here. Allen has had one block this year, but he booms one. Good. Out of bounds inside the 30 at the 28-yard line. Matt Allen has been a viable yes. weapon for Troy State in this football game. Special teams on both sides really have. They're, uh, particularly with Troy, though, with a punter and, and their kickoff specialist. Quinn Gray in the second half has thrown a 57-yard touchdown pass to Demetrius Bendross. Meanwhile, Larry Blakeney over on the sidelines, as we've mentioned, with just a little bit less than nine minutes to go in this game, he has got to do quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of coaching. He's got to make some adjustments, no doubt. Yeah, their offense was not able to, to move the football at all. 28-yard line, Williams, big fullback, gets a couple of yards, a 245, 250-pounder. Eats up some clock here. He gets it very interesting now to watch how conservative Florida a and becomes. They want that clock to run. They're up by seven. Chris Archie ends up having to make a tackle, and Archie gives up, uh, let me do some addition here. He gives up 75 pounds. 170 versus 245. Gray has time has room and throws downfield. It's Ben Dross again. This one's intercepted. Eric Sloan is an All-American. And you go against him too many times, a lot of times he'll burn you. Nice position. The ball floated. Oh, yeah, ben Dross did have a step match. He sure did. The ball floated on him. He slowed down a little bit. It was up right here on the, on the replay. He's throwing into the wind here, Max. Yes, it is. Nice pick. Nice concentration there. The ball did stay up a little bit yeah. too long because I guess the wind caught it. And Eric Sloan makes the interception. He was an All-American last year with seven interceptions. He only had one during the regular season. Nobody threw in his direction, basically. But he has an interception in each of the last two games. In the postseason, he's made big plays. That's when great players come to the surface. Nutter, play 
Banks. And throws. Is it complete? It is. For what it's worth, Bouton gets it for a half yard as Jerron Daly supplied pressure defensively for the Rattlers. Means maybe a half yard or a full yard, let's say. Once again, coverage in the secondary was too tight. He did not want to take a chance of throwing it down the field. He tries his out route, picks up a yard. From the 21. This is Wayne Thomas for two. Maybe three. Jerron Daly is there again, as is Vernon Mitchell for FAMU. Wayne Thomas, the sophomore out of Dothan. As Daly has played a very good game. So th this defense has given up on average about 23 or 24 points a game. They give up 319 yards per game. So far, Troy State has just 197 yards of offense. The defense, again, we reiterate, yes. has been the key to this game for Florida A&M. Done an outstanding job. 71 yards passing for Troy State, 252 for Florida A&M. Possession play here, third down for Troy. Nutter overflows. He had a couple of receivers coming right to a point. Pop Williams and David Hill. Had time to throw the ball. Both of them. Had time to throw the ball this time, Barry. He said, all right, just overthrew. Had a couple of guys going right to the same spot. And I suspect he was trying to get it to Pop Williams, sure. who was working against Darnell Vickers over there. And again, Troy State has to kick it away. The interception by Eric Sloan comes to naught. Matt Allen will be called upon for the eighth time today. Another good one. This one's low, though, but Kanan Lamb is not able to roust it out. I don't think Lamb has any fear about fielding a ball. This guy will try to catch him anywhere. Another good kick for Matt Allen, but it's going to take more than that for Troy State to come back. Florida A&M with a seven-point margin, and they've got the football. Again, the winner of this game will play Youngstown State. Youngstown State won earlier with six minutes, 40 seconds left in the football game. You're watching NCAA Division I AA football playoff action on College Sports Southeast, your college sports television network. The Heat head to the West Coast to battle the Clippers. Clippers, Heat, Monday. Coverage begins at 10 on Sunshine. He's known throughout Florida as the Garden Rubber, and he will show you ways to transform your yard into the envy of the neighborhood with tips and tonics that will make landscaping your home an easy and fun adventure. Tuesdays at 4.30 and Sundays at 7 on Sunshine. Now, Cornerstone Promotions brings back the spirit of the 60s with the greatest songs of an unforgettable era. Jawan Sider is up and testing that ankle. He is ready, I guess, if he needs to get in the ball game. But Quinn Gray, in a reserve role here in the second half, has acquitted himself well. Much more. Con Here's Williams with a yard, maybe. Over that right side of the defense, Al Lucas was responsible. Hey, remember, our website is up and operational. Check out College Sports Southeast new website, www.collegesportscentral.com, and see what's going on at College Sports Southeast, your college sports television network. I'm Barry McKnight, along with Max Howell, Kevin Long, patrolling the sidelines. Shelton Felton made the play on the last snap. And Gray throws complete, 40-yard line. Robert Malone to the 42-yard line, and that's a first down for Florida A&M. And right now, 
Billy Joe and the FAMU coaching staff has got to like the position they're in. There's no doubt I'm watching side continue, continue to, to warm up over there, Barry. A much more conservative approach with their offense when he's in there, and particularly as the game winds down and Florida a &M has the lead. Jimmy Joe on the this side. This looks unusual, the quarterback under Billy the center. Joe. Yeah, we're seeing <laughs> Quentin Gray giving away to Kenneth Williams. You saw the sequence a moment ago. Jimmy Joe on the sidelines is the wide receivers coach and offensive coordinator. He has got the line in to the press box right where we are, where the head coach, Billy Joe, administers the football game. There's Billy up there. He is right beside us. And he sees his team with a touchdown lead and an interception. Archie drops to a knee at the 49-yard line. Well, if Troy's going to win it, it appears the defense is going to have to step up and does because the offense is just kind of bogged down. Well, our situation crystallizes a little bit, or at least Troy State's situation does. They have got five minutes and 23 seconds. They need a touchdown. The defense has given them the football here. Chris Archie is a Florida native. He's out of Milton. That's his seventh interception of the season. Like Eric Sloan, he now has an interception in both postseason football games. On the sidelines, Kevin Long. Barry, just very, very quickly, we just watched the, the uh, Florida A&M defensive unit going over their strategy. They feel Troy State is going to start throwing to the back side of the backfield. So we'll see how that happens. They're looking for any kind of thing they can do to counteract that. First down, Nutter wants to throw. Nobody's open. Down it goes. Jerron Daly for Florida A&M. That's a big one. That's a huge play right there for Florida A&M. As you pointed out, the secondary here, Barry, is, is there's nowhere to throw, nowhere to go. They're doing an outstanding. They're blanking the wide receivers for Troy right now. He's got time. He's got time. Jerron Daly comes, grabs him, and throws him to the turf back at the 46-yard line. The loss is five. Teams are even now, and turnovers at three apiece. Troy State needs to capitalize here. Nutter tries to set up. Down he goes again. Oh, my. Another loss. This one a six-yard loss. Credit Cedric Bird, who came in at right end when Tyron Johnson went out with the knee, and Bird puts Brock Nutter down on the turf. Speed rush, the defensive line, the offensive line of Troy cannot contain them. T1 yards to get for Troy State on third down. LeBaron Black moving laterally. Speed. 44 yard line. Speed of the defense will not allow him to, to come outside. Grover Fields was there. Corey Johnson was there. Darnell Vickers was there. On third and long, straight handoff, and Black cannot outrun the Rattlers. For the second consecutive time, Brock Nutter and the Troy State offense cannot capitalize on a turnover. Allen, again, another beautiful kick. Kanan Lamb at the six, takes it to the 20 or nearabouts. He's out of the 19, 18 or 19 yard line as Nick Colbert rode him out. Three minutes and 24 seconds left in this one in Florida. A&M has turned the ball over on each of their last two possessions. But, Max, the defense continues to play just spectacular football. There's no doubt. And the, uh, the length of the game now is starting more so with Troy, with the offensive front, to wear down. If you notice, they are doing some substitution on the, de on the defensive front for Florida A&M. But Troy's offensive front just cannot contain these guys. Nutter's on the phones to the press box. Offensive coordinator Don Jacobs giving him some advice. Ken Williams will get it. He'll lose yardage. Aaron Fields is there. Now half the defense is there. He still won't go down. Did not bring him down. Kenneth Williams didn't get anything, but at least he didn't go down. And we'll see. I, I imagine we'll hear Kenneth Williams' name a lot for the remainder of this telecast. They're yes. going to call on him a bunch. Troy, Troy calls timeout. Timeout called by the Trojans here. 
With three minutes and 15 seconds left in the game, Florida A&M has the touchdown margin on the road. You're watching the NCAA Division I AA football playoffs on College Sports Southeast, your college sports television network. I just enrolled my company in it. That's a picture of frustration right now. Brock Nutter in the Troy State offense has been given opportunities but has not been able to get anything done. Further second down. Florida A&M 13 to get here in the waning moments of the ball game. They want to throw. It's complete. Lamb pushes ahead to the 23-yard line. Pickup of six, maybe seven. Very conservative, though. Another time to allow out for that out pattern as Jones and McLean round them up. And another timeout called here is Florida a and I mean, that's their that's their personality is to throw the football and in a situation where you want to salt it away and, and go home. They're not getting away from their personality. No, they, they really aren't. We'll break away. You're watching the NCAA Division I AA football playoffs on College Sports Southeast, your College Sports Television Network. The Gulf Coast offense for Florida A&M is a controlled passing attack, and yet they have not been able to control the time clock. Florida, Troy State has a huge margin there, and if you counted that on the scoreboard, I'd say they're in good shape, but you don't. The one over the middle, complete. Kane and Lamb, what a play. 45-yard line out at midfield. Not only a tremendous catch by a tremendous wide receiver, but what a throw by Quinn Gray. One of the, one of the best plays of the game right there. Uh, very critical. Oh, my goodness. This definitely merits another look at it. Split a pair of defenders, Rayshon Reed shoves him out, but that's a huge first down for Kanan Lamb and Florida A&M. Quinn Gray started out slowly through the air, and that pass was a risk. Yes, it was. But they convert for a first down. Larry Blakeney's looking at the clock, and he's not liking what he's seeing right now. Commission from their own 48-yard line is Fan Yu. Kenneth Williams. Four yards right up the middle, Aaron Fields. They want the clock to run now. Troy State has one timeout left. Florida A&M has all three, but they're not in a mood to use any of them. Billy Joe in the Florida A&M coach's box. As he watches his Rattlers try to salt this one away and head back to Tallahassee. Clock is running. Three on the play clock as they snap it. Williams again. And third down is upcoming here. Troy State will use their final timeout. Troy State asks for a timeout here. It comes with two minutes, 14 seconds showing on the game clock. And Troy State down a touchdown at home. If you, if you go back and look and think through, and we talked a little bit about that just a moment ago, Barry, kind of a, a two-half offense, uh, really. A more, many more snaps running the football by Florida a the first half than the second half. Uh, time of possession has been a, a really a, a, usually as a, can be a killer to you, but they've had to, they've been an offense with big plays so far this uh, this whole ball game. So they up uh, by seven, 2.14 left. Once again, Troy's defense has been on the field a long time. It appears to me they, defense will have to win this ball game Troy if they can pull it out. Larry Blakeney did not want to have to use that timeout. He would have preferred to have saved it, but Florida A&M with a huge third down conversion forced him to call a timeout. They were able to convert on a third down play that they had to have on a nice completion here from Quinn Gray to Kanan Lamb. That was huge. That yes. may be the one that's, uh, to, to coin a phrase, the nail in the coffin. Yeah, that was a, that was a key play for him. Kenneth Williams, 245-pound senior. They're going to call his name several times, 50 yards in this game. And he stands in good shape to see his senior year of football continue on. Gray gets a snap. Here's the shuttle pass. Williams first down and more. 30. He's to the 20. Fields gets him at the 13-yard line. And a flag flies as the
the play stops and the Florida A&M fans exult. Kenneth Williams with a big, big play. That was huge for him. Little shuffle pass. Missing the tackle nice there shuffle. is Lucas. That doesn't happen very often. Reed misses a tackle. Here comes Fields to save a touchdown. A holding call is the initial infraction. As we'll again hear from Harold Bender. Holding on the offense. 10 yards, spot of the foul, first down. The 10 yards is not that big of a deal. The spot of the foul is not that big of a deal. The first down, first down is that big of a deal. That You're was right. important. It certainly was. 24-yard line is where they'll spot it as Larry Blakeney. His team was rated number one through a significant portion of this season. But once you get to the playoffs, to use a phrase from a popular country music singer, you either got to get hot or go home. There we go. The clock running. 145, 145, 144. First and 10, Kenneth Williams and the Florida A&M Rattlers. Again with the call on the penalty play, and this one will be blown dead. Florida A&M won the very first Division I AA title, beating UMass in the title game by seven way back in 1978. Dead ball, false start, on the offense, five yards, still first down. Florida A&M had not won another playoff since that 1978 national championship under Rudy Hubbard. They had not won another game until last year when they beat Troy State down in Tallahassee 27 to 17. They became the first MEAC team to win in the 1AA playoffs in those 21 years. And they're in good shape they are here. The clock Three on the play clock when they snap it. Williams, a couple, right over the top. Troy can do nothing about it. Quinn yeah. Gray is waiting until the last possible second on the play clock to snap that football. And over on the far side, the Florida a and fans start, start to smell a victory. Yeah, the celebration started, I think. Yeah. Florida a and broke almost 8,000 fans from Tallahassee. Detroit for this ball game. The offense for Florida A&M will ice this football game as you see Gray wait until eight on the play clock. Three on the play clock. Waiting until then, putting a knee down with 30 seconds left. As we said, the offense the offense will ice this game for Florida A&M, but it was the defense that won cost the Larry Blakeney this football game. Florida A&M has won it. They move on. Improbably, FAMU has won two straight games in the one double A playoffs away from Tallahassee. And for the first time in 21 years since the season, Florida A&M has won two straight in the postseason. Very a well conceived game plan by Florida a &M. I thought they did an outstanding job in, in monitoring the particular end of the ball game by mixing the, the short, safe passes with a good running game. Run from a spread formation primarily. Well, the, well conceived. On the field, Kevin Long stands with Larry Blakeney. Kevin. Clearly, you're running through a very, very tough defense today. Well, you know, I think they were a little bit overshadowed by the Gulf Coast offense. We knew they were pretty good, and uh, we didn't we didn't do enough to challenge them, really. Uh, you know, our, our, we were uh, a bit in the up ourselves offensively, and, uh, you know, that's uh, you got to give credit to the opponent, though. They, they, they played well. Good job, man. Uh, you know, one of those days. But the defense was very capable and competent at the point of attack. What do you uh, do when you, know, you, if you can hold these guys to 17 points? You ought to have a chance to win. And, you know, I guess we did have a chance, but we didn't take advantage of Good luck. Great, uh, opportunities when, when our defense turned it back to us. And our punter was just keeping us in the game, keeping us in the game. Matt Allen was tremendous punts. And uh, so, uh, you know, it was uh, it was their day. Florida A&M has uh, really come on strong at the end of the season. And, 
and there to, to the victor go the spoils. And I wish him the best. Coach, I know, uh, just very quickly, it's tough to feel very good right now, but clearly you got to be very pleased with a season like that. Well, you know, I'm proud of these kids, these seniors, and uh, this program. You know, we've come a long ways in nine years, and certainly we'd like to go gone farther, but, uh, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't to be today. All right, thank you very much for taking time, Coach. There you have it right here, Barry. Coach Valerie Blake, he clearly, clearly right now having a tough time being able to appreciate this season as much as I'm sure he will next week. But right now, Boy State season ends today with a loss to FAMU. Barry. Well, I can tell you right now, up here in the press box with the Florida A&M coaches staff, there's jubilation up here. There is a picture of contrast and emotion right now. Billy Joe sees his 13th seeded team go to 10-3 and three on the season. They will go to Youngstown, Ohio next week. Week. If they win that game, they play for the one double-A championship. 17-10, Florida A&M beats Troy State in Troy. You're watching the NCAA Division I double-A football playoffs on College Sports Southeast, your College Sports Television Network. Game, Barry McKnight and the coach Max Howell. Florida A&M wins it 17 to 10, and I'm you know, that's no fluke. That's a well coached, well prepared football well, team. Well coached, Barry. You're absolutely right. A situation where uh, it was a, a game of two halves, really. The offense spread the field, ran the ball the first half. They came back, spread the field, but they threw it very effectively. Troy State just absolutely gave out offensively by the end of the ball game. Well, already in the one double A playoffs, it's been a bracket of upsets last week and now this week. That's one of the exciting things about the one double A. Regardless of your regular season, and Troy State had a great one. If you don't produce in the postseason, you head back to the house. No doubt. Billy Joe's done an outstanding job with that team you pointed out. I have not won a playoff game since the late 70s when they won the national championship. They win two in a row back to back. These guys are on the way. They got a chance to win it all, I think. Well, here's the here's the storyline for Florida AM. They go to Youngstown, Ohio next. Youngstown State. If they win that one, then they will go to Chattanooga for the national championship game. They'll play it next week on the road, and the road hasn't been a real problem for them yet. It certainly has it there. It appeared that it had been prior to this, but well, again, whatever Billy Joe's done, not only has he brought together a great offensive team, you pointed out many times today, the defense won this ball game. Though. Well, Troy State, they end the season 11-2. and two. A lot of seniors played a lot of great football for Troy State. They can hold their heads high. No doubt about that. Larry Blake has done a remarkable job here. They'll be Back. I was expecting him to say that down on the on the sideline a moment ago, but he's quite frustrated now because he didn't feel like his offense produced the points and the yardage it needed to. Larry Blakeney will bring Torres State back to a championship game before he leaves. Florida A&M moves on in the one double-A playoffs on the strength of the win here in Troy. For the coach, Max Howell, I'm Barry McKnight. Final score, Florida A&M 17, Troy State 10. You've been watching the NCAA Division One double-A football playoffs on College Sports. Southeast, your college sports television network.